that day started out as any other day. I went to class in the morning, met up with my friends, and we decided to sit outside for lunch because that was the first nice day in April. My name's Anne Marie Hochalter, and I was injured in the Columbine shootings. Before I was injured, I was a very, very, very shy person. It forced me to come out of my shell. I think now, you know, on the, on the other side of, you know, what happened to me, I gained faith. I thought that it was a senior prank. I didn't think that it was real or anything, and uh, I thought they were using paintball. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold were up a concrete flight of stairs, and they were shooting down at everybody. I felt a, a stinging in my back when I thought that this was the end, you know, I saw a red thing move out of the corner of my vision, and it was an ambulance. And at that time, um, Eric and Dylan were in the library, which was right above the cafeteria. There were some police lined up um, around the outside uh, perimeter there, and uh, they started shooting at each other. They were able to get me to Swedish Hospital, and uh, they did four hours of surgery. It was still very, very touch and go for, you know, a couple weeks. They weren't really sure if I was going to um, make a full recovery and, uh, and, you know, barring the spinal cord injury, I did make a full recovery. My mom, she committed suicide six months after I was injured and she had been struggling with depression for a very, very long time. Columbine didn't cause, you know, her, her illness or, you know, caused her to commit suicide, but it certainly didn't help. You know, it was, uh, um, in October and she decided to, uh, go to a pawn shop and, um, you know, get a gun and, uh, you know, she, she shot herself. I know that, you know, dealing with my mom's death was, was very much harder than what happened at Columbine. Just because I think that it, it shocked me because, you know, I, I was injured by a gun and the fact that, you know, she committed suicide with one was very hard to understand and I, I was still recovering, you know, and, and you need your mom, you know, and so um, it was just really, really hard. And I struggled, you know, a lot with, you know, anger towards her and over what she did, but um, now I've, you know, I, I'm at a better place where I can understand and I can forgive her, you know, for what she did. So I still miss her, you know, every day, but, um, but yeah, I know I'll see her again. You know, you just really don't know what you have until you lose it. Because I, I did before I was injured. I took, you know, my walking ability for granted. I, um, I took everything for granted. When I first got injured, you know, my family had to deal with um, so much with media requests and having to, you know, adapt our house, which, you know, we didn't end up doing because it was impossible. So we had to move into a new house and getting that prepared and all of the, you know, ramifications of my spinal cord injury, what I would have to deal with down the road and, and wheelchairs and adaptive equipment and everything. And then, um, you know, after, you know, my mom passed away, we were kind of forced into that again with, you know, media requests and hounding and, you know, our family was going through a really hard time and we all banded together and, and, and lifted our, you know, lifted us up basically. And um, I don't know, you know, what I would have done without the support of my family and friends. Family and friends are very, very important and faith to get through anything, you know, traumatic in somebody's life.